Magandang hapon po, Ginoong Pangulo. Magandang hapon din po sa mga binibini at ginoo ng Malacanang Press Corps. Uh, tatawag ko na po, ang unang magtatanong ay si Binibining Marie Ruiz ng Radyo ng Bayan. Well, si Secretary Babe Singson, Secretary Alcala, at saka Undersecretary Ignacio ng DNR ang aming kaharap kahapon. At uh, nakakagalak yung mga informasyon na ipinahagi nila. Amongst other things, no, um, napakalaki ng potential na itong Coco Fiber, yung Coco Net Technology, yung Coco Pit also, uh, para may angat yung kabuhayan ng ating mga mamaya na nasa sektor ng pag uh, pagninyog. Ang estimate is about 15 million Filipinos are under the poverty line. 10 million of the 15 million are in coconut producing areas. Okay. Yung, sabihin ko na muna sa inyo kung ano pwede, saan pwede kami dito. Medyo extensive, no? Uh, Mahaba-haba yung briefing na. Uh, yung baka hindi natin alam, yung coco fiber is presently being used as a material for yung car seats, among other things. In Europe, um, there is a penalty for uh, using materials that are hard to recycle. Whereas there is no such penalty for uh, natural materials like coco fiber. So, ang laking incentive to car manufacturers. Sinayit nila kahapon yung Mercedes-Benz raw. Uses coco fiber as a replacement for foam. Okay. In China, they're already, yung nagawa na ng coconut, there is a waste disposal in landfill area that was previously covered by plastic. The plastic exposed to the elements breaks. And once it breaks, the seepage, yung yung attendant pollution nito landfill. They used uh, coco fiber and soil, and uh, this has preserved no, yung, yung landfill, prevents uh, degradation to the environment, and it's also being studied to stop the desertification process no, in China. Germany, Japan, America have also utilized it. Yung tayo, mga 5%, I think, of the, what the potential for production is actually being used at this point in time. Um, so again, yung potential. Now, what are the immediate benefits? Yung merong slope protection na kailangan no? uh, for protection of various roads, no? uh, and rivers, etc. It costs the government about 3.5 billion pesos per year for uh, this slope protection. Transferring it from the other technologies to coconut will save us about 3 billion pesos. 500 uh, million na lang magiging kakailangan ng budget to accomplish the same thing. I was very impressed with the demonstration of a project they did in the Hanselma Highway. So they tried uh, three technologies in this uh, particular section of the Hanselma Highway. Yung isa use something called shock creek. No? And uh, the description is you have a wire mesh, you spray concrete on it. That portion costs about 2,300 pesos per I assume square meter, no? That has already failed four times since they tried it. Yung utilizing coconut for 180 pesos for the same area uh, has withstood the ravages, the same ravages. At saka binigay pa sa kanya yung pinaka-point ng curve. Kung bagay yun pinaka-prone to failure, yung prone to landslides. Yung area nila already has trees and grasses growing on it. The root system enhances the capability to withstand erosion, landslides, etc. This technology is, was utilized in SETEX. And up to now, yung, yung slopes ng SETEX have uh, proven parang able to withstand. So, yung, we are, there will be seminars conducted by the DPWH to introduce the technology to our engineers so that uh, this will be the principal method for slope protection. Sabi ko lang kahapon, come up with the program, we do pilot areas, then parang may, hindi pwedeng from kakaunti to lahat, di ba? So, may demonstration. Um, and uh, in effect, there is a very big potential, not just on the f utilization of the fibers coming from coconut husks, but also the byproduct, which is called coco peat. Yung coco peat is um, a material that... Um, it's not a fertilizer, no? it uh, conditions the soil. Okay. 
So, tinetesting, may pinakita ng test doon. Um, sa America, I think they use something called MOSFET. Sorry, no, I'm, I'm drawing all of this from memory. Yung MOSFET at saka yung coco peat ni, uh, in addition to the soil was utilized. At ang yung photographic evidence of uh, plants uh, grown in both media, ang laki ng difference by a factor about three. No? Yung size, yung leaves, etc. of that of those that utilized coco peat. Um, again, yung the growth of that particular um, company headed by Dr. Arboleda is significant given the fact that they never really marketed it except by word of mouth. But they have you they have uh, garnered numerous awards. No? Now, yung also yung Dr. Arboleda represents the type of scientist yung I really am very sympathetic to. He used to be with the Bicol University. They were they were tackling rice and corn production in an area predominantly devoted to coconut. So, sabi niya, yung, even our research and development budget, um, the studies that are funded for all of the state colleges and universities, they seem to be duplicating previous studies wherein we can allocate the same funds to items such as this coconut fiber technology and others that have more practical application and are in new areas of uh, endeavor and study. End point yan, we see it as an avenue, number one, direct savings to the government. Second, a potential to really revive our coconut industry and provide uh, these 10 million Filipinos with the potential of increasing their incomes dramatically. Now, yung, there is also a corollary multiplier effect by the uh, infusion of uh, infusion of this uh, economic activity. No? Halos walang savings, diretso na paplaw back in velocity of money na tinatawag and napakabilis. So, we will be implementing this soon. May follow-up question po yata si Marie? Yes, sir. On another issue, sir. Sir, uh, are you amenable to the suggestions of some senators that you call for a LEDAC meeting to discuss the SK and Barangay elections? Yes, we will call for one soon. No? As, soon okay. as soon as they finish uh, their organizing also. Mm -hmm. Sir, and what's your message to the youth? Yung SK, sir, yung say, parang they're opposing yung abolition of the SK Council. Ano, yung, sir, mensahe nyo sa kanila? Yung part of the task that I, I believe I asked PMS to study, DILG also to comment, is how do we make uh, the youth no, really active members in our governance? As you know, in a lot of areas, the SK are treated as second-class citizens by the, by the Barangay Council. So one of the proposals is to have a sectoral rep no, voted upon by the youth who will have the same privileges as any other kagawad no, and thereby have a claim no, to, equa equa um, to equality and thereby be more effective in advancing the concerns of the youth sector. Si Raymond, you, tinasa Bess. naman po sa Bombo Radio. Magandang hapon po, Mr. President. Sir, uh, may nabanggit po itong si Chief Negotiator Dean Marvig Leonen that the government is open to charter change para po mapagbigyan yung inaasam-asam natin na final peace agreement with the MIRF. Sir, <coughs> did you sanction this uh, statement from the Chief Negotiator? Ang pagkaintindi ko, I had a uh, communication with uh, Dean Leonen, no? and he said that um, this was a proposal by their counterparts. And like any other proposal, it should be studied and um, diba, we ca they come up with the recommendation afterwards. Where, uh, yung hindi naman yata niya sinabi na this is a necessary precondition, but you cannot dismiss outright if you want to be a negotiator in diba, demonstrating goodwill to arbitrarily say, ayaw namin yan, ayaw namin to. No? You explore, then you, you dialogue as to whether or not that is right or wrong or if that is feasible or not feasible. Follow up lang, sir. Ang naging reaction po ng MILF at the same time, even non-government organizations sa Mindanao, they very much welcome this uh, statement from your chief negotiator. So how, what would be your message now, given this uh, clarification to the MILF? Yung, the reports that are at my desk to suggest that you, um, para ba, in maximum autonomy ang inahabol nila. Um, yung framework to Sachacha, if you look at the old MOA AD, I think it's no longer the framework that they're discussing. Yung share of uh, the resources that are being extracted from their areas is also a high priority. So, dito ko lang, no? Yung, that was a proposal. We can't even say that that is the official proposal of the MILF, no? But, yung, it was not dismissed outright, and I think the only commitment is to study the proposal. 
Ang susunod pong tanong ay mula kay Joyce Panyares ng Manila Standard Today. Sir, good afternoon. Sir, with about three weeks to go before uh, Ramadan ends, have we reached a decision as to whether Malaysia will remain as the facilitator of the peace talks with the MILF? Well, ni lang naman ano, ni naman decision natin yan. This is a, either a bilateral or even a trilateral. This will be the subject of discussions with both the Malaysian government and pa possible other uh, entities who can become the third party. So at this point in time, they're still in the nascent stages. We will uh, we will make appropriate announcement once things are finalized. So can you just share to us uh, who are the other parties whom we are looking at for a possible facilitator? In as much as I will broach the idea to the head of state, perhaps it would be better if I talk to him first before announcing it. Si Tess Bedico naman po from People's Journal. <coughs> Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon. Sir, earlier you said you will form a commission to study the possible changes in the Constitution. Are you still pushing through with the plan? Yes, but we also have a deadline for filling up all the other positions in government. For instance, so in GOCCs, we need something like 173 heads of these various uh, GOCCs. That doesn't include the numbers that will have to constitute the respective boards. You forming the Truth Commission was, in a sense, difficult. There were a lot of volunteers, but uh, it took somebody of the caliber of Justice David no, to, to really give it, shall we say, uh, the impetus to achieve its mission at the earliest possible time. Informing that uh, commission to study also is part of the task of our headhunting operations right now. And I have to tell you, and I have to be very honest, it is not that easy to find all of these qualified people that we can trust, no, that who are willing to sacrifice uh, for the duration of the tasks. No. So I would like to announce that all, all 4,300 positions have been filled already, but that is not the case. Yung daily, I have um, parang the, the matrices for various candidates for various positions. That is still, uh, we're still looking for people to head that uh, commission to study charter change. Sir, but you, do you have a time frame when can this be formed? Under the Constitution, we have a deadline for filling up all of the posts, no, all the appointments, a uh, three-month period. We, I think that will end by September. So that has to be the priority. You know, then afterwards, once uh, we have completely reorganized this government, then we can uh, devote more attention to finding the commissioners for that uh, uh, commission that would study the charter change. Thank you, sir. Ang susunod pong tanong ay manggagaling kay Rose Miranda ng Abante. Magandang hapon, Mr. President. Meron ho ba kayong desisyon tungkol sa excess rice? At kung wala pa po, gaano kalaki ho yung chances na aprobahan niyo yung rekomendasyon na i-distribute na lang ho ito sa mass feeding, feeding program sa mga eskwelahan? Yung, I'm just waiting for, uh, uh, there's a meeting that will be conducted by the DBM, the OF, and NFA, DA, uh, for recommendations on what to do with the excess rice. Um, right now, there is a suggestion to come up with a food for work program for the people who are who have been displaced by internal conflicts, specifically in Mindanao. Yung, I asked um, for justifications in study of the legal issues, etc. We do not want to be guilty of transgressing any laws. No? Yung, syempre, the biggest sin would be to make this rise, uh, to allow it to get rotten. So there is a proposal to devote something like 800 million pesos worth for a food for work program. There is a supplemental feeding for those of our countrymen who are still in the shelters for those uh, dislocated by this, this strife, no? will cost about 400 plus million. You know, 800 is a, a rounded off number, it's 800 plus. So it will be about 1.2 billion. It will go in either to the food for work program or the supplemental feeding.